Good morning from Fresh Start. What a blessing it is to be back in the house of the Lord. Uh, we are still in our Genesis Bible study. If you would, uh, grab your Bibles and turn with us this morning. We'll be in Genesis chapter 28 and uh, looking forward to the message this morning. Uh, Father is uh, so good in that to give us complete description of all the things uh, that has done in what we want to recap mostly is, is that uh, in chapter 27, the last verse, it says, And Rebekah said unto Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of, of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these which are the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do me? Her concern was of the work that she was brought into this life. And uh, uh, many would say that... Uh, Kind of like uh, Mary. Well, Mary was just a chosen vessel uh, for the Lord and uh, to bring in the Messiah. And also, that's what Rebecca's work was, and that to bring in uh, Jacob and uh, Esau and to bring in these two nations. And it was for a reason. And Father has reasons uh, way beyond our understanding at times. And uh, his ways are much higher than ours. And uh, so we, we continue to study along. Uh, the way that uh, Father would have us to read, chapter 28. You can turn your Bibles and we'll ask Father for his blessings. Precious Father, we come to you thanking you for another blessed day. We ask Father that you'd open eyes and open ears to your word this morning. Allow your word to land on fertile ground, Father, and we'll give you the praise and give you the glory for it all. In the precious name of Christ, I pray. Amen. Chapter 28 and verse number 1. And Isaac called Jacob, and blessed him, and charged him, and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. And uh, that's exactly what was said in the last verse uh, by Rebekah. And uh, she had mentioned the, the Hittites. And, uh, of course, uh, Jacob has gone a little further, uh, more in region. He's, you know, I don't want him to uh, take of the... Uh, the Jebusites, or the Parasites, or of any of these uh, in Canaan. So he says in verse number two, Arise, go to Padanamaram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. So he's told him specifically where to go, and uh, where to uh, gain a wife, and uh, in this process, he does not have a servant like Abraham did, and that to send him out. For we know that uh, Jacob is not only going for the reasoning of uh, gaining a wife, but he's also uh, trying to flee uh, from Esau. Uh, he's fleeing from the anger of his brother, and so uh, he, he pretty well uh, falls right in line with that. He said, that's a good idea, Father. Verse number three. Isaac is still speaking. He says, And God Almighty bless thee, and make thee fruitful, and multiply thee, that thou mayest be a multitude of people. We want to highlight this morning that uh, what Isaac is saying here, he says, God Almighty, and what this is in the Hebrew, this is your El Shaddai. And, uh, what we have is the name of God and then the process that God will go through to help an individual. This El Shaddai uh, shows God's power uh, and to supply all the needs of his people. So as we are thankful through this holiday season, as we have just finished our Thanksgiving, uh, uh, we should be thankful Thankful to El Shaddai for what he has blessed us for and uh, brought in our homes and in our businesses and uh, things of that nature. What God has done to prosper our life. And uh, if we live our lives for the Lord and uh, Father knows uh, way before we ever ask uh, that uh, if we were to ask of him, Father would supply our needs. And uh, he would uh, provide many things for ministry. Uh, we know that, uh, that God is very concerned about a person's ministry and a person's life. 
And so we see here that uh, the word El uh, is the source of the strength, uh, but uh, Shaddaiah uh, is the supplier of all needs. And uh, so we're so thankful that God uh, is that type of a God. Uh, he shows favor on his children. He shows favor, uh, not in a favorable type way, not in that to make you stand out above another, but he will bless. He'll bless a home, uh, mostly when we aren't expecting it. Uh, and, and God's good that way. But he said, and may God Almighty bless thee, and thee, make thee fruitful, and multiply thee, uh, that thou mayest be a multitude of people. And that's exactly what he's asking him to do. In verse number four, and give thee the blessings of Abraham to thee, and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. Verse number five. And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Pandanaram unto Laban, son of Bethuel, the Syrian, thy brother of Rebekah, Jacob, and Esau's mother. And we know that this is only speaking of the region of, uh, of Syria. Uh, and we know that he was not a Syrian. We know that he was of the uh, same lineage of Abraham. Uh, but uh, we want to be sure to not confuse the reader, uh, to make sure that they understand that this was only because he lived in that area. Verse number six. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob, and sent him away to Pandanaram to take him a wife from thence, and that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. And that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother, and was gone to Pandamaram. Verse 8. And Esau, seeing the daughters of Canaan, pleased not Isaac his father, then went to went Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the wives which he had, uh, Mahulah, the daughter of Ishmael's Abraham's son, the sister of Nebajoth, to be his wife. I believe this was done out of spite. But I believe that Esau, with the simple mind that he had, thinking that he was going to get back in line with his father, and of course he would take, instead of the daughters of Canaan, he would take up from the loins of Abraham. He would take a daughter of them. But uh, it shows Esau's ignorance in understanding the blessing, and uh, he's not going to gain anything from that. Verse 10, And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. 11, and he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows. And he lay down in that place to sleep. Twelve. And he dreamed and behold, a ladder set upon the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold, an angel of God ascending and descending on it. We want to be sure and to uh, explain this ladder. This ladder is representative of Jesus Christ. And that is where uh, the Bible teaches us that Christ is the link between heaven and earth and uh, between God and man. And that's exactly what these angelics were doing. They were coming to give report unto the Lord. And uh, we have that same kind of topic of... Uh, in Job chapter 1, uh, you have in Job 1 where the angelics were ascending and descending and reporting unto God. And uh, that's more or less what uh, was going on here. And he says, verse 13, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land wherein thou liest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. And he has promised that if he would continue on and do the work for God, that he would bless him and that he would bless not only him, but his seed. And that's you and I today. Verse 14. 
and thy seed, Israel, shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And boy, it is today how that the Christian nations uh, are providers uh, through the blessings of Abraham and from God that these things come and how that nations, well, rely on Christian nations today and that to bring out the help and the needs that they have. Uh, and, and God is good in that way. In verse 15, and behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places, whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And uh, we're thankful that God has given this hope and this understanding, that he would not leave any of us wanting. He would not leave us in need. And God has always supplied the needs. And uh, this again, he obeyed El Shaddai. He obeyed the God that gives and the God that blesses. In Hebrews chapter 13, turn with me to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews 13 verse 5. It says here that let not your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Verse six, so that we may boldly say that the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what men shall do unto me. That's exactly what God wants us to keep in our minds. That it is God that watches our lives and it is God that provides for you and I. It's not the handout from a man. It's from God. For the word says that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above. And we must understand and, and uh, recognize that uh, it is El Shaddai, this blessing that comes our way. And that's why we are continually blessed in this day. Even though the world may be upside down, even though uh, people may be running to and fro trying to figure out things, God will settle the minds uh, of his children. He will settle the minds and uh, put no fear in your heart, but give you contentment. And that's what God expects, for us to be content and to wait upon him. Uh, I guess one would say, how would you ever be patient enough to wait upon the Lord with fear in your heart? And that's exactly what God does not want. He does not want you to have fear. He wants you to have understanding and to be aware. Are there things going to happen? Sure, there's things going to happen. But the key to it all is, is to remember that God is in control. It is God's design. It is God's army. It is God's purpose in that if somebody wants to be deceived in this latter day, if one wants to follow after the Antichrist or uh, believe in a any moment doctrine or a flyaway theory, if one wants to do that, Father's not going to stop you. But he has made an open way for people to understand the truth and to be prepared for that coming day. There are a lot of things that will transpire before the coming of the Lord. And Many take from what they have heard from man and try to twist it around, uh, man may, and uh, uh, make it sound as if that uh, uh, Christ is going to come early and he is going to uh, come and, and take away some and leave others. But scriptures do not teach us that. The scriptures do not give us that understanding. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 2, he said, I would not have you to be ignorant. Speaking about that day, which day? The day of the Lord. He said that there must come a falling away first, and then the son of perdition uh, should be revealed. And so we know that all these things that God has already laid out for you and I to understand, to know, it, it, you say, well, well, why do you continue to harp on this? Well, there may be doubt in some people's minds. 
They may be doubt of a rapture theory or uh, to wait upon the Lord and to not be a part of the Antichrist uh, camp. The theory in the rapture idea is that uh, they are going to go away and not have any harm whatsoever and uh, these things are all going to be just gloriful and uh, leave behind uh, many people. But that's not what the scriptures teach. The scriptures teach us that we all, all, A-L-L, will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. We will all see our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at the same time. For the Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So we see here that God has laid out a, a promise in that to uh, Jacob. And uh, he is given again. I'm going to read again verse 15. He said, Behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. What a blessing that is. Verse number 16. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. Verse 17. And he was afraid and said, How Dreadful is this place. And this word dreadful is uh, awesome. So in other words, how awesome is this place? This is none other but the house of God. In Bethel, the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. And whom is the gate? It's Christ Jesus. Amen. Verse 18. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillow and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. Now this stone, uh, it could be called the stone of scone or the stone of destiny or the coronation stone. In England, uh, it would be referred to as the coronation stone. Uh, and that is where uh, Elizabeth uh, was uh, set in, I believe it was in 1953, and that she was uh, crowned as the queen and uh, utilizing this stone under the coronation chair. And uh, it is still used today. And uh, I uh, done a little bit of research and uh, didn't realize how large and heavy this stone was, but they say that this stone uh, weighed right at 335 pounds. And so uh, it was quite the stone. And uh, over the many, many, many years that it has transferred from hand to hand, uh, they have taken and put in rings in this stone and, uh, and that to be able to run a rod through it and handle it and be able to carry it. And But uh, what a blessing this stone has been over the many years. And uh, verse 19 it says, And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of the city uh, was called Luz at the first. And uh, this uh, Bethel is house of God. Verse 20. <clears throat> and Jacob vowed a vow saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. Verse 22. And this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Jacob was sure in that to recognize the blessing that God had given. I guess it's time to take a moment and reflect on what God has given you and I today what God has done in our lives, how that uh, through the, uh, well, through the, the chaos of the world, how God had settled the minds of his children, how that he'd said, I never will leave thee, and I will always protect thee. And by that, Jacob sees that there is a blessing in this. And he says, uh, I have set for a pillar Shall God's house <clears throat> shall be God's house, and of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give thee tenth unto thee. Turn with me over to Malachi chapter number three. Take just a moment. 
and highlight just a couple of things that uh, we feel that is important. It says in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 8, it says, Will a man rob God? Question. Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Father is very concerned about how people recognize the blessings that come their way. It's expected of you and I to recognize these blessings and to do the work for the Lord. Not only are we to be one that has gotten a lot from God, but we are to give back to God. And how do we do that? Through our tithes and offerings. Verse 9, he said, You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even the whole nation. Robbed meaning not given back in this tent. We've seen there where Abraham, he tithed to Melchizedek. And uh, this also is a form of giving and to pay back what God has given. It's always been said that uh, what God has blessed, we are to at least take a tenth of that and to give back unto the Lord. I'm not going to say that it is some kind of chemistry, but I can tell you this, what it says here in verse number 10, it says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that meaning the house of God. Bring all your tithes that you have to offer unto God and give them to the house of God. And it says, that there may be meat in mine house. What meat is he speaking of? Is he speaking of sheep? Is he speaking of, of beef? Or is he speaking of... No, friend. He's talking about the word of God. He's asking that if you will provide, then there will be the word of God that will come from the ministry that I am providing for. And that's what Father is asked to do. He said, and that there may be meat in mine house. And God says, and prove me. Now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, uh, that there shall be no room enough to receive it. Father says, I want you to try me. You say, well, I, I don't know if I'm big enough to try God. If you would give to the Lord, God is saying, try me and see that I don't bless your home. See that I don't continue to give to you because you have been honest enough in that to give to me. This tithing uh, of your 10%, it goes in that to better the ministry. Although they may be many out there that are off the milk, and onto the meat of the word, and uh, understand a lot, but yet they just don't tithe as often as they should. Well, what that does is hinders the work for God. For we know that it takes so much to continue on a ministry, and takes so much to do a work for Lord, that uh, uh, we need your help. I need your help. The church needs your help. Not just this church, but where you are fed. When God shows you that the man of God, the woman of God, the, the group that has put forth the effort to bring out the ministry and to teach the word line upon line and precept upon precept, when all these things are done properly, the blessings of the Lord are there. God asks you to be a part of that. This is something that is part of the ministry. This is something that is part of the teaching. It's not always the most glorious part. It's not something that I'm proud of. Uh, I, I feel a, a little embarrassed by uh, saying that some should give. But that being said, those that do give and those that do provide and those that do put forth the effort, God is blessing your home. He is El Shaddai. He is the one that brings all the blessings. And as we read on in verse 11, he said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Who is he talking about? Who is the devourer? Well, if you look over in Joel chapter 1 and verse number 4, it talks about how that the, uh, the palmer, 
palm worm and the uh, canker worm and the locust and all of these are those that will devour. So he says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. <laughs> when is that? When the Antichrist is here. When all is gone amok and all has gone. So you're saying that if I tithe to the Lord, if I tithe to a church that's teaching, if I do what God's will is, then I have this protection, Brother Randall. That's what it's saying. It says that I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. The fruits of <clears throat> the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. This casting of your fruit. It says here, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. He's talking about how the fields are ripe and how it's so plentiful. He's talking about the teaching that will go out, that it will be a teaching in that to understand and to wait upon the Lord and not something that will, well, pull you out midterm. The scriptures teach us that uh, pray that your flight be not in the winter. Why? Why would you not want your flight to be in the winter? Well, because there is no harvesting done in the winter. You do not harvest in the winter. You do not want to be taken out of season. So therefore, those that are taken at the right time uh, are taken by God. And it's all because of the blessing uh, that was said by Jacob. Again, back in Genesis chapter 28, Verse number 22, one more time. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, and I will surely give the tenth unto thee. And I believe that was something that was instilled in his heart. That's something that he understood. And he had no grudgingness in that to give unto the Lord. All right, we're going to jump right on into chapter 29. Read a few more verses here before we close. 29 and verse 1. Then Jacob went out of his <clears throat> went on his journey and came into the land of the people of the east. And he looked and behold a well in the field. And lo, there was three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well they <clears throat> watered the flocks and a great stone was upon the well's mouth. So in other words, these uh these Flocks were all sitting around waiting, and that for the stone to be rolled away. Verse 3, And thither were all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth, and watered the sheep, and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place. Verse 4, And Jacob said unto them, My brethren, whence be ye? And they said, Of Haran are we. In other words, where would you come from? Where are you? What's your home? And they say, we live here in the land of Haran. Verse 5. And he said unto them, Know ye Laban, the son of Nahar? And they said, We know him. 6. And he said unto them, Is he well? Question. And they said, He is well. And behold, Rachel, his daughter, cometh with the sheep. So we see here that Rachel is coming which she is the youngest, and uh, uh, either a bonds, bondsman or a, a, a youngest would tend to the sheep or the cattle. And so it was, uh, it was of the uh, Rachel, it was Rachel's job in that to tend to the sheep. Verse number seven. And he said, Lo, is it yet high day? Neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water ye the sheep and go feed them. In other words, they were there at a time when they weren't supposed to be. They weren't really supposed to be watering. And, and well, we're taking this uh, understanding from uh, Jacob, which was a really good, uh, well, agricultural. He understood how that the sheep ought to be fed at what time and keep them in a cycle. And uh, he was saying, well, it's a little early in that to be feeding them. Or to be watering them, rather. And uh, verse number 8, And they said, We cannot until all the flocks be gathered together, and <clears throat> till they roll the stone from the whale's mouth, 
Then we water the sheep. Verse 9. And while he yet spoke with them, Rachel came with his, her father's sheep, for she kept them. Verse 10. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. So we read here earlier that it took all these men that were there in that area net to water the sheep. It took all of them to roll the stone away. But as Jacob, when he came down, it only took him by himself to roll that stone away. And uh, he did it because of the love that he had for Rachel and for the work that he was trying to, well, gather. He was looking for a blessing from God. He was looking for a direction from the Lord. Verse number 11. And he kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. I believe this was uh, love at first sight. I believe that he understood that he had found his mate. And uh, how God had blessed. Uh, uh, evidently, she was uh, beautiful, uh, just like his mother. And uh, he was really uh, interested in this young lady. Verse 12, And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother, and that he was Rebekah's son, and she ran and told her father. <laughs> now, of course, in that Time, they didn't have what you would call nephews or uh, uncles, per se. So uh, this wording is a little bit uh, distorted to our understanding, but that's what it means, is that he was the uh, nephew of Laban, and that uh, Rebecca's was his mother. And uh, did you notice how that uh, Rachel <clears throat> had just up and left the sheep? She was so excited that she just ran off and that to tell her father Laban that someone was here, one of the family. And so she had left the care of the sheep and that to Jacob. Verse 13, and it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. And he told Laban all these things. Verse 14, and Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh, and he abide with him the space of a month. <clears throat> Verse 15. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brothers, thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught? Tell me what shall thy wages be. 16. And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, which means weary. And the name of the younger was uh, Rachel, uh, which means uh, a, a ewe, uh, a female sheep. 17, and Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. In other words, Leah was real timid and shy and uh, kept to herself quite often. Uh, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored, meaning that she got along with everybody and spoke with everyone. The difference between the two. Verse 18, and Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. 19, and Laban said, it is better that I give her to thee uh, than that, that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. That's verse 19. We're going to stop right there. And we're going to pick back up next week. I want you to, of course, read ahead study ahead, uh, but uh, there are a lot of things here that uh, Jacob was trying to uh, put ahead. He was trying to set some time between him and Esau, of course. So he knew that in the land that it was uh, honorable and that to uh, give uh, his love and his diligence toward bringing home this wife. So he set out seven years in that for a space of time for Esau to cool down, for one would say. And so, uh, but we'll pick back up in verse number 20 uh, next week. We pray that the Lord has blessed you 
and had a wonderful holiday. And uh, we are looking forward in that to uh, hear from you. And uh, maybe you write to us or uh, send us a, a comment on the page. And boy, we sure do appreciate each and every one of you. And we thank you for all the things that, uh, that what you bring and then what God does in our life. And so uh, until next time, may the Lord uh, richly bless.